Try to trick you, David, so be careful, or you may yet lose both your soul and your Hey, welcome back. Uh, we're try I'm trying to go in order here, and so I've come into a position where I've got a bunch of films from 1972 that are so obscure that they don't have a published release date. So I'm going to alternate between those and the movies that actually have release dates and were released in January. So last time we talked about a movie that was released on January 1st, and this time we're going to talk about Blood Sabbath, which has no published release date. And after some research, I'm pretty sure it's because although it was made in 1972, it was never theatrically released. Uh, it did get multiple VHS and DVD releases, and uh, I don't think it even had a theatrical, a, a potential theatrical release poster. So here we have the crappy DVD release, uh, British DVD release art. Um, <clears throat> you can see here, it's got that really like late 90s, early 2000s photograph of a woman who's not even in the movie type art. Uh, the movie is about witches who are definitely, well, I don't know if they're satanic or not, but they're definitely not Christian. Um, so the film stars, uh, actually, it's, it's kind of funny. It's, oh, yeah. Here we have the top build people here. We have T Tony Geary, who is most well known for being on dozens of seasons of General Hospital, the soap opera, but this was before before he joined General Hospital. And uh, the other big name on here, well, big, relatively big name, is uh, Diane Thorne. Diane Thorne, not a huge actress, but she was in the pretty well-known 1975 film, uh, Ila, Oh, let's see, what's the actual title? Ila, Ilsa, Ilsa, mm, now I forget. Ilsa of the SS, but there's another word in the title. So she did this series uh, of four films that were where she was like a Nazi, like prison camp leader. And she likes, like basically, causes prisoners of war to be her sex slaves. And uh, she did four of those movies, and the, and the first one at least was pretty popular. Oh, I know, it's called Ilsa, She-Wolf of the SS. It just came to me. So she's from that. This is before that. that. This is about three years before that came out. So these actors were all unknown at the time. <clears throat> and uh, I guess Tony Geary, if you are into soap operas, is quite well known. Um, <clears throat> although... Within the horror realm, he's not. I have an alternate poster here. Let's see if we can get it up. This poster, well, this uh, video art, I guess we could call it. Um, part of me likes this one better and part of me likes it less <laughs> because it kind of looks like uh, early 2000s, like hardcore album art, not to mention Blood Sabbath could definitely be the name of a metal band. Um, so anyway, the movie's not that good. I give this one a 4 out of 10. It's extremely obscure. Uh, it was produced by, I think it was, I think it was Barbeck or Barbet Films. This is the only film they ever made. Um, it had no theatrical release, like I said. It's about a guy who is played by Tony Geary and he's supposed to be a Vietnam War vet, although they don't say where this movie takes place. It's just shot out in the woods somewhere. Like the whole movie is is filmed in the, some woods. Um, I couldn't find any filming info like where they filmed it or anything like that. And since it's an unknown company, I don't even know if it's a California based company, which usually, you know, over half the movies that we are seeing are from Los Angeles area. And uh, that's for any genre. And uh, if you narrow it down to just American films, it's it's m definitely more than half. So it's it's a fair guess that it was shot in the woods in California, but I don't really know. 
Um, it was it was directed by a woman named Brianne Murphy. Although on let's see, is it this one? Yeah, you probably can't really read it down here, but at the bottom it says directed by Brian Murphy. But actually, it's Brianne Murphy, who is an Irish English woman who moved to the United States, and I read that she actually crashed Ringling Bros. Circus. She showed up dressed like a clown and apparently jumped down into the ring and performed as a clown, even though she was not employed by the circus, and uh, gained her some attention. And she's really more well-known. Well, she's not really well-known at all, but she's her main credits are cinematography credits for television. Um, she was the cinematographer for the Louis Anderson show, and uh, she was also cinematographer for a few ABC, like, children's specials. <laughs> She's a TV cinematographer from the late 70s until the mid-90s. But before she did that, she directed Blood Sabbath. So Tony Geary is a Vietnam War vet, and he's, like, wandering out around in the woods for who knows why. We have no, no knowledge as to what he's doing in the woods. He's just like homeless or something and he's camping out in the woods and then like while he's sleeping a bunch of naked women show up who are witches and they like basically sexually assault him and he like gets up and he kind of freaks out and then this guy named Lonzo saves him and then the plot is really really weak but he ends up going down to a lake and there's this witch in the lake and then for no real reason he falls in love with the witch in the lake. Her name's like mm, Elia or something like that. And then she says that they, she loves him too but they can only be together if he gets rid of his soul. So then he's on this minor quest to get rid of his soul. Meanwhile, we find out that Lonzo has made a deal with the witches that the witches will leave the town. I put town in quotes alone because there's no town. Well, no, actually, there's one scene in a bar. Um, there's For the most part, there's no town shown in the whole movie, except there is one scene in a bar. Uh, and so basically the deal is the witches will leave the town alone if Lonzo delivers one chi female child to the witches per year. And basically the female child is like groomed to become a witch, which is interesting because all the witches seem to be the same exact age. Although that could be a, a magic spell, but most likely it's poor writing because there were no child witches, even though every year they're getting a new child, but there's no children witches. But anyway, um, basically all the witches really seem to do is run around naked. And uh, they do have a couple of pentagrams in the movie, I think. And at one point, the Queen Witch, which is played by Diane Thorne, does voodoo on a priest, which is, like, barely relevant. Um, the priest, I forget the priest's name because he's only in two scenes, but the priest was played by an actor who was in that movie Wizards from the late 70s, the animated weirdo movie Wizards that Mark Hamill from Star Wars is in. Anyway... That guy, like, really overacted his scenes whenever it was his turn to act. He was, like, screaming for no reason, <laughs> which was kind of funny. Anyway, uh, instead of giving them a child this year, the main character, played by Tony Geary, decides he's going to give him his soul instead, and he does. Now, it's called Blood Sabbath, but I give it only 4 out of 10. Some of the acting was okay, but the story didn't really... There wasn't really much to the story, so it was pretty boring. Most of the scenes were just out in the woods, sometimes at night with minimal lighting, and sometimes during the day, and whoever, ironically, this director became a cinematographer, but whoever filmed this didn't know what they were doing because sometimes they were in the shade filming someone else in the shade with a completely highly sunlit background, so you can't really see what's going on. Um, when they're in the full sun, it's fine. But when there's shadows and stuff, it, it's so poorly filmed that like sometimes, I, I'm not 
I'm not a cinematographer, but I think the camera was in the shade and it was filming something else in the shade, but there was like a lot of sunlight in the background and it made it so that you really couldn't see what was in the foreground. So that was bad. Um, there's an attempt at having a psychedelic sequence, which didn't really make sense because I don't think, well, I don't think anybody got high in the movie, but maybe when they took his soul out of, oh yeah, I think that's what happened. There's a, a scene where they attempt to do some superimposed imagery where uh, the main character's soul leaves his body. And then I think he goes into some psychedelic trance, which is really just the naked witch is dancing around him, which he wasn't even, he wasn't even imagining it. He wasn't hallucinating because then like, it like sequenced into a scene where they were all right there. So I think it was just like weird camera effects for no good reason. Um... Yeah, so that's basically it. Uh, the music might, might have been a highlight. You heard some of the music at the beginning of this video. Uh, it, I, oh, now I forget the name of the uh, composer, but he was, he was a composer that had done a few movies for AIP, including Scream of the Banshee. And uh, he also did the music for The Terror and Comedy of Terrors. Uh, and he also did the music for the English version of Black Sabbath, the Boris Karloff Italian movie with uh, Barbara Steele. So he had done some stuff. Oh, and he did the music for the Eye Creatures. Uh, the Eye Creatures uh, was a late 60s AIP TV remake of an earlier film. Uh, I think it was Invasion of the Saucer Men. Yeah, Invasion of the Saucer Man got the remake. And uh, John Ashley was in the Eye Creatures. It's like just a worse version, except it's in color of the Invasion of the Saucer Men. So anyway, yeah, the music was decent. So that's it. Um, it was a very obscure movie. Then the next one, we'll switch back to a movie that had an actual theatrical release. So hopefully that one's better. All right, see you next time.